For this video, I'd like to talk about the idea of what's called the unit circle. And the unit circle is a powerful tool that can essentially help us solve problems in trigonometry. And the reason it's useful for trigonometry is that we essentially have this circle where the radius of the circle is equal to one. And what we can do is essentially draw any kind of triangle that we can imagine within this circle. And what I mean by that is that once we draw in our radius, that we can just drop down a vertical line and this forms a right triangle. So we have some triangle with some angle theta and it's at the coordinates x comma y. And basically what we're gonna do is find a relationship between x, y, and theta. Or essentially we're gonna relate x to the cosine of theta and y to the sine of theta. But like I mentioned, we can essentially draw any triangle we want in the unit circle. We can draw a really tall triangle that has very little in the x direction, or we can essentially draw the opposite where it's a really short triangle and it has most of its length in the x direction, so very little in the y direction here. And as you might have guessed, we call it the unit circle because it's a circle centered at the origin with a radius of one. But like I mentioned, we're gonna try and find a relationship between theta and x and y. So I mentioned that this is useful for solving trigonometry problems. So remember, when you're doing trigonometry, it's often helpful to rewrite the SOHCAHTOA so that you essentially can easily remember all of the trig ratios. For instance, this part here is the sine of theta. So we have that the sine of theta is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So opposite divided by the hypotenuse. And notice that for our triangle here, the opposite side is this y value. It's just the height of this coordinate here. And the hypotenuse is equal to one. So we can rewrite this as the sine of theta is equal to y, since that's the opposite side of the angle, divided by the hypotenuse, which is simply equal to one. So in other words, we can say that y is the sine of theta. And likewise, we can look at the cosine and find a ratio there. So we know that the cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So we can write the adjacent over the hypotenuse. But going back to our triangle here, the adjacent side is essentially just the x coordinate of this point here. The x value is this distance from here to here. So our adjacent side is simply equal to x, but like before, our hypotenuse is equal to one. So we can rewrite the cosine of theta as x over one, or simply that x is the cosine of theta. So if I were to draw some other triangle in here, let's say like this, and I'll drop down the vertical line so that this is a right triangle. And essentially the x value of this point would be the cosine of theta, and the y value of this point would just be the sine of theta where theta is the angle measured from the x-axis, the positive x-axis. So it'd be this big angle here that looks like it's maybe about 120 degrees. Now you can also find this angle too, since we're essentially dealing with supplementary angles. They add up to 180 degrees since they're the angles that make up a line. So we could just take this angle and subtract it from 180 to find this one. But essentially, the x and y coordinates of this point are based off of this big angle here. So you would just, whatever value of theta is here, you would plug that in here and here for the sine and the cosine, and then just evaluate them using a calculator. So the main thing you wanna take away from the unit circle is that the x coordinate is equal to the cosine of theta, and the y coordinate is equal to the sine of theta. So with that in mind, let's look at some different example problems.